Hi, Coach Weber. How are you? All right. Good. Good morning. Good morning. I remember the last time uh, you played them, the post game was, wow, I knew they were good, but I didn't know they were that good. So as you studied that game, what did you learn from that? What can you put together with such a young team that you have? Well, they, they, are, can, they are really good, and you can continue to see that as they progress through the season. Uh, you know, they have great guard play. Uh, the other guys are, are really good role players. Um, they, they seem to enjoy each other, play well together, share the basketball, and it, it makes it difficult. I, I, I would say, you know, our, our, since then, uh, you know, we've had our, our ups and downs and all arounds, and, you know, the first thing we're going to have to do is, is hopefully take care of the basketball a little better. Um, we only had 14 turnovers against them the, the first time, uh, you know, so it, it I guess that's way better than what it was the other night and last week. Uh, so we have to take care of the basketball. We got to do a better job of limiting their, their easy ones. Uh, they made threes last time. And, but we also gave them uh, quite a few easy baskets that, uh, you know, hopefully our, our defense a little better. Um, I look at West Virginia, you know, we hold them to, I think it's 67 or 69 the other night, and they score some, a few at the end when our walk-ons were in, and and then they go get 80, 87 or 88 the other last night against Texas Tech. So I hope our defense is a little better. And and you think about West Virginia, they score 69, and we have 28 turnovers, and they get 26 points or whatever off of turnovers. So. I thought our half-court defense was better in that game. Now can we do it against uh, elite guards and elite players? Uh, we'll have to see. Uh, you know, our, our, you know, we. I thought we had a good practice yesterday. We competed. But it's, uh, you know, we have to understand. And I, I don't think we understood how good Baylor was. I don't think our guys understand how hard West Virginia plays. Um, they've had to get – uh, you know, they've had to learn lessons and now can they adjust and pick up that sense of urgency, uh, play, you know, play harder, be a little more exact and definite um, and see if we can, you know, it always helps to make shots. Uh, you know, that's, that's also beside the turnovers, that's been uh, one of our difficulties. Uh, you know, we cut it to eight the other day. We have a wide open three. We don't make it. They go down, make a, get a backdoor play. We have another wide open three. We don't make it. And they hit a three and now the game's, uh, you know, the game's uh, gone the other way again. So uh, it, as I said, it always helps to make a few shots that hopefully for the spirit of our guys. Are you expecting Nigel back? And if so, what difference will he make? Well, you know, he gives us a point guard. He gives us some stability. He knows he has a, a good feel of the game. But again, you haven't, uh, you know, you haven't played basketball for 17 days. I worked him out Sunday for about 45 minutes, and and he was he was you know he was done. I mean, he was he it, it took a lot out of him. Now he practiced yesterday. I, I kept seeing him bend over and and. You know, you got to get your, your conditioning back, your timing back. Uh, I thought he played all right yesterday. Just that long sustained uh, part of practice, it, it took a little bit of toll. Uh, I thought with Antonio uh, a couple weeks ago, it, it took him one game and, you know, four or five practice to kind of get back, get his lungs back, get, get, get his timing back a little bit. So uh, he, he will play and, you know, he, he gives us – some stability, some ball handling, some passing, uh, hopefully some shooting, and uh, and and I think more than anything, just a, a feel of the game and what we need to do, and where we need to get the ball going, where it needs to go. Um, so, but I don't want to put too much pressure on him, even though we do need him. Thanks, Coach. Yep. Uh, next question to John Kurtz. I'm gonna piggyback on that, Bruce. Do you have a specific? plan as far as how many minutes you think he'll be available for? I think we'll just see how he goes. Um, uh, you know, I, I, you know, I don't, I don't know if we can get him to 30 minutes, but if we can, you know, rotate him, you know, every four or five minutes and, and give him a little breaks, I, I think it'll help him, um, you know, if, maybe get him to, you know, in the 20 somewhere in there without pushing him uh, too much. We'll see how his practice goes today. 
is there a, a battle to keep too much pressure from being on him with the situation you guys are in and how much the offense has struggled? Yeah, I mean, but now we, you know, you got Casey back, you got him back. Uh, you know, you hope we can, the pressure is just getting a better flow and not trying to do too much. And, you know, pretty simple basketball. You, you got to be able to dribble pass and, and, and make some shots. Uh, you know, if you can do those things, then the concepts and the strategy gets involved. And uh, the other day, you know, like I say, we, we, with, it's, it was almost simple that we were within eight, you know, with all the turnovers we had, uh, you know, so if we can just be a little more exact uh, and, and in basketball, we got to get some inside touches. Our, if you study our stats, obviously the big guys' percentages are much higher, um, and we got to be a little more patient, get the ball inside, give them a chance to work, uh, and see if they can be successful. Appreciate it, Bruce. Thanks. Yep. Uh, next question to Kellis Robinette. In a game like this, Bruce, do you play up the underdog angle at all with the guys, us versus the world, that kind of thing? Well, we have, I mean, we have nothing to lose. We lost by infinity the first time. So I don't know if you can go higher than infinity. So, it, you know, just go play, compete. We, we went there several years ago. Uh, they were number two in the country, I believe. And, you know, beating them, obviously we had some older guys. We had a little bit of different team, but we, we fought and grinded and kept the score low. And, you know, we, we got to, got to stop at the end and found a way to win. So, uh, you know, that can, that's all we can do. And, and I, I just, I want him to play the basket. I want to improve. I want him to take care of the basketball. I want them to compete um, and, and keep fighting. That's all, that's all. And if something, you know, who knows, you never know. Every game's different. A lot of things can happen. And I know this year has been crazy with all the COVID and everything, but it hasn't made you rethink, um, your strategy on filling a final scholarship, if you have one, and maybe bringing in an extra walk on or two, just in case? Well, we, you know, we always would, you know, we like to be at 12 or 13. You know, it just depends uh, how the year goes. Um, I always like to have at least two good walk-ons, uh, maybe a third, um, you know, just for the, you know, the, the scout team. And, and, and also when we have injuries, and we've had our share of injuries the last – few years just to get even through practice um, but it you know we we did put Joey on scholarship now for the second semester you know well deserved the uh, you know not only stepped in in that Oklahoma State game and, and did did okay but he's he's really him and Drew have really saved us uh, as far as even having practice a lot of the time and uh, you know one of the problems we wanted more walk-ons in the summer but our, our athletic department, you know, the protocols, the rules, you know, there was a lot of, you know, who are you going to bring in? Who do they live with? Um, I, you know, did you want your, you know, to take that chance, uh, you know, because we had talked to a few kids at, you know, that were coming to school here, but uh, we just couldn't make it work out. So, uh, you know, we've had to deal with it, but I appreciate Joey, Drew, uh, really appreciate all our guys coming every day and, and, and practicing their butts off. And I got to know, were you mad when the Packers kicked the field goal the other day? Uh, I, 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 like, you know, coaching is not much fun, to be honest. And, and that's why everybody, you know, that's when you cheer for somebody, um, you always, you, and, and they don't, it doesn't go right. You always question the coach. And I, one of my friends texted me and I said, yes, coaching sucks. And, uh, <laughs> you know, it's just, it's part of it when you win and you, you know, they had a really good year, it's special team, but um, you know, they just didn't make enough plays and, and to win the game. But I'm, I'm definitely cheering for the chiefs in, in two weeks. Okay. Good to hear. Thanks Bruce. Good luck tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, next question of Michael Goins. Yeah, Bruce, has this team gained the type of uh, mental focus that you would like to see out of it or see it embrace? Well, I, I, you know, I think it's, there's so many things we've had to deal with and, um, you know, we've had to keep their spirits up. We've had to keep their mental focus. Um, I, I think if they, the, my biggest, if we can make a change is that just let the game come to them and not do things that they, 
you know, try to force the game. And I think we'd be a little better off. Uh, I, you know, I, I think, I hope we made some strides yesterday. I, obviously it helps to have Nigel back a little bit, just a, a guy, as I said, that gives us a, some ball handling, the passing and a little bit of a feel for the game. Um, and, and now we can maybe, if, you know, I guess my goal, hope, or, you know, wish would be that we get in a little bit of rhythm with all these guys back and, uh, get it, you know. I thought we had you. You mentioned it the other day. We had started making some progress, moving the basketball, doing some better things offensively, and, and then you know when Nigel went out, uh, uh, you know we just there's no rhythm, no routine, and and you didn't have Antonio, and then you had Antonio back. So uh, you know, I, and again, you know anything can happen. Who knows? We just tested, you know, it, this with this year every day. You just just kind of. Do what you do and, and expect the unexpected. So, uh, you know, but if we can get everyone back and get a little rhythm, I mean, this is what we've talked about for the last two, three weeks. Uh, you know, the, the finish, the last the last 10 games. Let's see what we can be as a team and, and the progress we can make. And what's been Nigel's emotional well-being during his timeout? Oh, it's hard. I mean, he wants to play. I mean, he would have played anyway, you know, but – Obviously, you know, there's too much at stake, his future. Um, you know, it, it's hard. You just sit in your room for 10 days. We were lucky there were some nice weather days. He got out, walked a little bit. Uh, you know, they, it, you know, you just, you, every coach probably called him during the day, just keep his spirits, talk to his parents. Uh, I mean, they, not only him, Siri's been contact traced and been quarantined for over 20 days. Uh, Antonio's been out. Uh, Davion was out for 28 days. I mean, I can go down the list. Uh, you know, it's it's a hard thing, and uh, I, I we got the the parking lot has cars in it here, and people are getting vaccine. They're getting the vaccine, and uh, I know I'm looking forward to a chance to get that, and I'm sure a lot of other people, and and hopefully by the, the summer we can get back to some uh, normalcy. What was the extent of his availability on Saturday against uh, West Virginia? No, none. There was none. Uh, he, he couldn't play. I mean, that was his first day, uh, his last day of protocol. And so Sunday was his actual first day where he could have been able to play, who could have played him. And has Davion begun to embrace a kind of a demand the ball mentality? Uh, you know, I, I think he's just such a good young man. Now we watch film and, and, and we'll we'll show the hey he's got if you see his numbers we got to get it to him, and I, I he had a great move in the first half you know stepped through went with his left hand, um, you know at, you know yesterday in practice it was definitely an emphasis to try to get the ball inside, now hopefully we can continue doing that uh, the rest of this week, and as we move forward in our season. And how do you feel like he's competed against some of the other bigs, uh, veteran I, bigs? I thought. Davion is, you know, I've said it over and over. I, I mean, he's been my most pleasant surprise. He, he, he's done some good things. Obviously, he's got a ways to go. Um, you know, he's, he's handled his own. It, it helps now he has Casey. I think uh, just physically, uh, Casey gives a little more, you know, he's got the experience and, and, and a little more strength. Uh, so you, you hope between the two of them. And I, we actually saw some signs of life from Carlton yesterday in practice where he started getting a little more physical. Uh, you know, we, hopefully we, you know, we got a pretty good future with those guys in the post. Thanks, Bruce. Uh, next question to Kels Robinette. Uh, with, just with what you said about Joe earlier, how did you guys find out about him in the first place? Can you tell us that backstory? Um, Joe, um, uh, I think Joe might have contacted, uh, one of uh, our coaches, coach Fraser back when Chester was here and he was at Dodge city. Uh, he's a real young, young man, you know, he's young age wise. He was actually, I think might've started junior college either at 16 and then turned 17. Um, uh, you know, we, we talked to him about, uh, uh, coming and red shirting, uh, which he did. And then this year doesn't count. So technically he has, uh, you know, three years left after this year. So, uh, you know, he's got where he couldn't maybe do 135 on the bench press when he got here. I think he's, 
he's doing six or seven now, or maybe more than that even. Um, you know, and he, he can compete in practice. He's got a great attitude. He's had to play guard. He's had to play big man. Um, he's had to do everything for us. And, and, and he's, and along the way, he's kept a great attitude and, and done whatever we asked. So it's, it's, I'm happy that we were able to reward him. All right, cool. Thanks, Bruce. Mm -hmm. Anything else for Coach Weber before we let him go? Oh, uh, last question to Michael Goins. Yeah, Bruce, just uh, can you comment on what Scott Drew's accomplished at uh, Baylor and, and the progress they've made and heights that they've risen to? Well, uh, you, you know, I, I've said all along, I, I've said for the last few years, I don't think he gets the credit his coaching. Um, you know, and I, I think to his credit, he's changed. You know, I, he his zone was really good and it gave him a chance to win games. Uh, actually, I wish I could teach that zone like he did, but he also found out uh, he, he maybe didn't get where he wanted to win a conference championship to, uh, you know, to get uh, further in the, in the NCAA tournament. And, you know, last year he, they felt they were pretty good. And then obviously there was no tournament. Uh, they didn't win the conference. Um, you know, I know all along the way, I, I, and I, I talked to him, text with him. Uh, you know, I, I think he has a special team. And, you know, if they can keep playing together, play unselfishly, uh, he's done a great job. But he's changed his defensive style. Uh, they, he's kind of taken a little bit of several different people in our league and, uh, you know, implemented it, and their kids have bought in. And I've I also said that I think he's been a great GM, you know, to find some of the guys they found. Um, and they, they've risen up to be pretty good players, and he's found a niche with that. So he, he's uh, done a great job. Uh, and, uh, you know, he's, he's had his ups and downs there, but, uh, you know, stayed the course, and, and he's, he's having a special season right now.